We stand today in the world at a great turning point. And that turning point is between fear and love. In the middle of the First World War, German army from Berlin sent a telegram to Austrian army to Vienna. The telegram said, here with us on the front, the situation is serious but not catastrophic. And what did the Austrians answer? They answered, here, the situation on the front is catastrophic but not serious. Isn't this our predicament today? We all know we are approaching social, ecological, and so on, catastrophes. But nobody is ready to take this catastrophe seriously. So maybe the time has come to take these threats seriously. This is why we are here today. We don't live in illusions. The true utopian are those who think that things can go on indefinitely the way they are now. We are not dreamers, we are the awakening. Thank you very much. These kind of myths can exist. The myth that, that young people are not politically engaged today, which I think is thoroughly, totally wrong. They are, much more than, than, than before. But it's not in the media in the same sense, because uh, media is not so interested in it. If you ask people that, are, uh, that were active in 1968, they, they would not agree. But if you look on the statistics, it's true. If you look on the number of people that have participated in a demonstration, that have done a petition uh, to the uh, municipal or to the state, the people that have done civil disobedience, the people that are engaged in, in any kind of action group, uh, it's much higher numbers today than in the 1960s. The thing was, in the 1960s, that they were united around some core issues. The struggle against the, the Vietnam War and, and, and a number of other uh, things that united them. And it was new and it was uh, publicized in media very much. But today it's much more dispersed. People engage in many different issues. Animal rights issues and climate issues and, and anti-capitalist issues. The struggle for the refugee rights and so on. But if you take it all together these many different movements. Young people are more active today than in the 1960s and 70s. But there are two things that they're not active in, and that's political parties, and that's trade union politics. And I think that's logical, because young people today have realized that you don't change very much of the mainstream politics by going into a political party. And trade unions, they are basically part of this development model that we see. What I see is that we live still in a system which was created in a world that looked really different from today. And what we're lacking is the update. 
old systems that were created when the world looked fundamentally different, when people were different, our consciousness was different. Now we need to update that world. We know that the Africans are just as much human beings as we are. We know that there are seven billion people on the planet who everybody needs clean water and food. But we keep living in a consciousness that where we keep reproducing the idea that, you know, they're lazy down in the south, that's why they don't have any money. Why doesn't the Africans just fix their societies? We still live in the values of that we're worth more than other people. But now we know, we know for a fact that we all have the same basic human needs, we're all the same, and these are our brothers and sisters. And we have to update our distribution of the resources to that. We throw food that comes here from Kenya, and then they're starving in Africa, and we throw food that comes from Kenya. This is not right. This feels deep inside my soul that this is not right. This is not how you would treat your brother. This is not how you would treat your mother. And this is not how to treat your common fellow human being. So we live in a system that is not relevant anymore. One year we, wrote, we vote for the right, and then we go back to the left, and then we go to the right and left and right and left. Why don't we go forward? <laughs> What's this? We don't have to choose between communism and capitalism. That's not the choice anymore. That's not the choice at all. We have a completely different world ahead of us now. A world that people couldn't even imagine it in the 1800s when capitalism was thought of, you know? Communism and capitalism are dead. And we're watching them die right now. We need a new system installed. It's like changing from, uh, from Apple to PC, kind of. <laughs> we just need something that is more updated to the world and the information that we have now. Money is not relevant anymore. We have so much clothes that we can clothe the whole world. But it's the superficial part of ourselves that says, I need to change pants every other day. I need to wash my hair with chemicals to be looking nice. But actually, these are superficial cultural things that are not relevant at all, not when you look to the bigger picture. So I think we need to reevaluate what's actually important in life nowadays, you know, like before we poison all the waters, before we pollute the air that we need to breathe, we have to stop and ask ourselves, what's important? Is it more important that I look nice at work? or that my grandchildren will get clean water to drink. I cannot sleep at night knowing that there are still 12-year-old girls prostituting themselves in Thailand. How can I sleep with that knowledge? How can I go to bed knowing that that is still happening? These are my sisters. It, that feels straight into my heart. You can block yourself off going like, oh, I don't want to see that. But if you take one good look and you take it into your heart, how can you not do anything about it? How can you sit and watch TV not doing anything about it? How can you read shit magazines that doesn't inform you about anything but to keep you stupid and apathetic? How can you do it? How can you choose it? How can that be your choice? By not being a part of the changing processes, you reproduce the system and you accept it. You silently accept it. If you do not fight it, you silently accept it. And I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to stand on the side. Planted in the darkness of the earth, 
and from there it grows in the darkness. But it needs water and, and light, sure. It needs a lot of water and light. And I think for it to flourish, it needs more people to come to it. Like, the nourishment that we get is people becoming happy and wanting to engage in what we do. That's the nourishment for our seed. That's how it's gonna grow. And I see that every day. Every person who comes here gets touched. And when it gets touched, you see that the idea resonates with their inner world. They understand what we're doing and they say, okay, well, let's go, let's do it. People come here and give us food and they come and give us music and share things. That's the nourishment for our idea. Then we know that we're on the right track. So I think for it to flourish completely, we need time, a lot of time. A lot of time. But you decide. You decide how much time it has to take. Because the more people that join, the faster it goes. But it cannot take, cannot go too fast. But we need patience, we need time, we need all of those virtues that I mentioned before. But basically, yeah, time. Gandhi didn't see even uh, India become free in 40 years from colonial rule. His methods took a lot of time. He, he died before he even saw the change. So, I'm hopeful what we're doing is for the next generation and the generation after that. I don't mind so much about me, <laughs> but I mind more about we. Yeah, sure, we're the seeds. Why not? Någonting är på gång. Something is on its way. Ett frö är sått. Det gror. A seed is sown. It sprouts. Det ligger under jorden och väntar. It lies under the soil waiting. Samlar kraft och näring. Gathering power and nourishment. Snart ska det se solen. Soon it will see the sun. Och snart ska solen se det. And soon the sun will see it. Det som ska bli ett nya världens träd. It will be a tree of a new world. Ett träd som ska växa till vad? A tree that will grow into what? Det vet inte jag. Men jag längtar. I don't know, but I'm longing. see about 40 regime changes happening from ordinary people overthrowing military dictatorships. That's a very positive development. It's an amazing thing. But where do you have the researchers that are systematically looking on that? There are some few, but very little compared to those studying Al-Qaeda or something. When I was in Senegal together with 70,000 other people from around the world at the World Social Forum, there is no uh, articles in the Swedish media. When there were hundreds of thousands of people doing uh, actions in, in India, there was no reports about that in, in, in Swedish media. Because this is not something that they, they don't see the connections between Senegal and India and Sweden. <laughs>